So in today's lesson, we are going to learn about writing simple methods. And methods, as you may recall from our lesson on objects, is what objects can do. Recall that objects have stuff we call fields and do things, which is what we call methods. We're going to learn how to do simple things, writing some simple static public void methods. So let's get into what I just said and figure out how to do this. So the concept of methods, we'll go ahead and start this with simple methods. The concept of methods comes from the idea that we want to do dry coding, D-R-Y. And uh, that's a short acronym that stands for don't repeat yourself. Computer programmers are often very lazy people. We don't want to do things multiple times. If we can do something just once and only have to do it that one time, we aren't going to spend the time to do it again. And the same comes with our coding practice. We don't want to be writing code a bunch of times where we're asking and doing the same procedure over and over again. Instead, we want to write it once and then call on that code block later if we need it again in our code. So we're going to learn how to do that. Let's go ahead and assume, let's, let's create a new class here. And we may have seen this already. We're going to create a class. You've seen this at the top of many of your assignments. Class, we'll call this the dog class. And then we open with our curly braces. So in our dog class that we have used before, we may have seen something like this, or you have definitely seen it. You've seen this, public, static, that should be a lowercase s, uh, void, and then it says main, string, args, and then everything that you have done so far in this class has lived between these two curly braces. And what you've actually done is you've written a method. You've written this method called main. So this is the main method. And every Java program must start with a main pro method that has this particular header, and this is called a method header. So this particular method header is for the main method. And we've used other methods so far in this class. We've used substring, we've used dot equals, uh, we've used uh, the square root and other methods as well. So let's go ahead and talk about how we can create our own method. So I've created this class dog. And maybe one of the things that I want my dog class to be able to do is I want my dog to be able to bark. So I'm going to create a method called bark that's going to print to the screen uh, the dog barking. Okay, so how do we do that? First thing we need to do is we take a look at our main method here, and it can give us a guide on how to do this. The first thing is this word public. This is an accessor. So this tells us who can access this method. And in this case, it is public, meaning anyone with access to this class, any programmer, rather, with access to this class can use this. And for us, we want to have anyone with access to this dog class to be able to have the dog park. So we're going to go ahead and say public. We're going to learn about some other keywords and reserve words that we can use instead of public, but for now let's stick with public. The next one is our word static. Now this is optional. This is optional and it signifies whether or not it belongs to the class itself or is an instance method. We're going to get into that in a minute, but this is optional. It can either be static or we can leave that blank. And 
One rule that we do need to know is that since our main method is static, any method that we call from within the class also has to be static. So static has to stick with static, and instance has to stick with instance. So static has to be with static, and we're going to want to call our Bark class within main, so we're going to have to use the static keyword. All right, our next thing is void. This is the return type. This is return type. And void simply means it doesn't send anything back to our program. There's a void. It's like an empty void. Nothing comes back. So we're not going to send anything back yet. We'll learn how to send things back in a little bit. So it's public. Anyone can access it. It's static, so it's going to be able to be accessed by main. And it is void, so we're not going to return anything. Now we can give it a name. We can give it our own unique name, just like a variable name. We can give it whatever name we want within the legal bounds of Java variables. And we use the same naming conventions that we use for variables. So we can't start with special characters, we can't start with numbers, and generally speaking we want to start lowercase and then camel case throughout the name. So we're going to go ahead and call this Bark. B-A-R-K. Now a good convention, I'm writing on a bit of a slant here, but a good convention is to put a space after that name. So there's space in front of the name and a space after the name, so it's really clear and easy to see where the name is. And then we're going to open and close parentheses. This should be something that we recognize as parentheses when we've used methods previously. We're going to open and close those. We're going to leave those empty for the moment. We'll learn how to fill them in a little bit. And then we're going to open our curly brace, just like we have there with our main method. And we'll go ahead and close a curly brace down here so that we have a set of curly braces now to write our method. And like anything else, we can write any legal code within those curly braces uh, in order to solve our problem of bark. Now, since we have a void method, we're not sending anything back, I simply want to print to the screen. That was my objective in the beginning. So I'm going to go ahead and write a system.out.println And I'll go ahead and say bark. Close with a semicolon. So now I have this method bark. How do I use it? Well, because we're within the same class, we're still within the dog class, we can just call bark within our main method and it will run any of the code that's inside of these curly braces. So I can simply write Inside my main method here, I can write bark. Open and close parentheses, just like I have there, semicolon, and it will print out bark on the screen. And I can do it again. And it will print out bark again on the screen. So in this way, I'm able to use the method in order to call this big long system that out to println, I can use a short name bark in order to trigger a complex action. And this is why we want to use methods. Now it doesn't matter what order I write the methods in, the method could be written above the main, below the main, my personal uh, coding style. I like my main above so I can see what the overall program is trying to do. And then if I have a question about what method is going to do what, then I can look through my program and find those methods. But if you prefer to write the methods above the main, that's also acceptable. Java doesn't really care what the order is. All right, so this is our basic main method. Next, we are going to learn how to pass in some parameters and do a little bit more and start to do some math and complicated ideas. All right, I'll see you guys in the next lesson.